Psalm 73 will be our new psalm of the month. I'll read and give a brief meditation on this psalm. You can find this on page 668 in the Bibles in your seats. Psalm 73. This is God's word. Psalm of Asaph. Truly, God is good to Israel, to such are as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here. Waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, they are the ungodly, who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, Behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. I thought how to understand this. It was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. It's a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? For there is none upon earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Some of you might remember that a year or so ago that I preached through the Psalms, a series of sermons that I called Learning to Love the Psalms. I actually preached from this psalm. I emphasized in that message that uh, the psalmist Asaph had learned to trust and worship God in the midst of his suffering. And I want today to, uh, to go back and elaborate on just what it was that caused Asaph to be so anxious, what it was that had stirred him up, the suffering that he was going through. He says early in the psalm, as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. See that in verses 2 and 3. He goes on then to describe just how the wicked seem to get away with murder, how they seem to experience no trouble whatsoever in this life. And even in their deaths, there, is, there seems to be no trouble for them. They live in luxury and abundance. They seem to wallow in ex- excess. It describes them as their eyes bulging with abundance. Very picturesque language, isn't it? But not only that, they scoff at God, they taunt God, saying that they can do whatever they please and God will never know. Does God see? 
Well, by their measure of things, they think that, that uh, God does not see it, that they're getting away with everything. So Asaph says in verse 12, Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. In other words, the wicked prosper. But I, on the other hand, says the psalmist, I, on the other hand, I've kept myself pure, and what has it gotten me? Nothing. And worse than nothing. I'm plagued all day long. I'm chastened every morning. In other words, he sees no advantage, so to speak, in the Christian life. He wrestles with the age-old question, why? Why is this happening to me? Why do the wicked prosper while the righteous suffer? Why do I suffer? (laughs) And it really is a pressing question, isn't it? His experience is all too common. One commentator has put it this way, that suffering injustice and being treated unfairly puts pressure on our faith. Maybe you've sensed that. He goes on and say, it tempts you to become envious and bitter. These are just different ways of saying, I'm dissatisfied with God. That's really what Asaph is talking about, isn't it? He's saying in verse 2, I almost lost my faith in God. This is what he's wrestling with. And this... uh, This tension of the prosperity of the wicked and his own suffering is a trial of faith. Because of that, I want you to pause and just reflect on that sense that Asaph has or that tension that he has. And I'm going to guess that it might be a tension that you've experienced as well. You may have experienced even a crisis of faith as you go through suffering. When bitterness and envy start to have their way, I would urge you to recognize that for what it is. Recognize that you are indeed in a spiritual battle. Pray that, uh, that, uh, that you would take up the shield of faith and pray that the Lord would protect you by, that, uh, uh, by his almighty hand And that you would then exercise that faith and exercise it in two ways. Here we'll look just briefly at the end of the psalm. Exercise your faith by reminding yourself of God's sovereignty. Verse 17. These thoughts were too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end goes on to describe that the Lord does not let the guilty get away with anything. It may not be seen in this life. Sometimes it may be. It may not be seen in this life, but God sovereignly judges all men. Remind yourself of that sovereignty. They seem to get away with murder, but God will set them in a slippery place, ultimately casting them down in judgment. And then secondly, remind yourself of God's goodness. This actually is is where Asaph begins this psalm. And it comes back again at the end. The beginning, it says, truly God is good. And that's a profession of his faith. That's, uh, That's where he begins with this complaint or the tension that he is in. He is saying, I believe that God is good. The circumstances of the wicked don't change anything. They don't change the sovereignty of God. They don't change the goodness of God. Their prosperity, their getting away with things, seemingly in our perspective, has not changed God. Sovereignty or his goodness. We know that especially... Because out of love, God has given you the best of all. He's given you his own son, Jesus Christ, to be your redeemer. With that in mind, we'll be singing Psalm 73, this first portion, all throughout this month. A reminder of this tension, this test of faith for you. And I pray that it would help you to 
gird yourself up in that, in your faith, that God is sovereign and that he is good. So let's sing Psalm 73, Selection A, and invite you to please stand to sing.